No, for, firstly, I'd like to uh, thank you for the invitation um, to speak. Uh, as I said, Limerick has come up in the world. Um, it's got three councillors, but I think the point that Paul made is crucial as well. Because those who took a stand, that was as important that you know those fields, those areas weren't left free to uh, the right wing parties and also just to Sinn Féin as well because we do have something different to say and uh, so I think the people who took a stand it's vital um, two and a half years ago I stood in a by-election I didn't win it you know felt a bit sick after it but you know there will be other days and it just shows that you um, you, you will have other days where you'll be successful the right wing parties Fine Gael and Labour had an absolute hiding in these elections just, um, you know the Limerick situation much better than me, and I'm sure people will come in from the floor. I was so busy, I haven't even had a chance to sit down and look at the results around the country, but just give you one example. In, in Dublin, and by the way, in Dublin, <coughs> Fianna Fáil still don't have one TD. You can thank us in Dublin West for that. In the European elections in Dublin, um, Fine Gael and Labour got 23% of the vote between the, the two parties. I mean, it was less than Sinn Féin got. Um, Fianna Fáil, I think it was 14. So in other words, two-thirds of the people rejected those three major parties, you know, which we all know is Tweed and Rome and Tweed and you know, That really is truly amazing that Fine Gael struggled to get that last seat. And everybody thought that he was a, a shoe in. Um, and I think obviously it was, it was a pity for us that, that Paul Murphy, who was uh, endorsed by the anti austerity lines, to maintain a seat, and that's a, a story for another day. But I think um, for the Labour Party in particular, this election really was payback for the broken trail of promises that they made to people two years ago. And uh, what I take as the most heartening thing from the election is uh, one of the first things I did, uh, the Arlingus workers were on strike last Friday in Dublin, the cabin crew. Uh, myself and Joe Higgins went down to the picket line. And uh, it's been a long time since I've seen such buoyant and militant mood among workers. And actually the elections fed into it. Because even a lot of them said, yeah, you know, the whole country is giving out about this lot. You know, the whole country is giving out about austerity. And uh, I, I think that this, this election could actually give people confidence to take the government on. Um, workers as well. And uh, I'll come to that in a second. I think one of the, the things that the Anti-Austerity Alliance did was it correctly identified before the election some very crucial issues. And I think, you know, we, we have to pat ourselves on the back for that. One of the first ones is, as Keane said, the idea that there, there's been a recovery. Yeah, but for who? For the rich. And when you said on the doorstep that it hasn't been passed down to ordinary people and they've no intentions of passing it on unless we make a stand. That really, really got an echo. I'm not sure about people here, but that was the one thing that made people listen and nod their head uh, in agreement. I think the... Um, do, does anyone think in, in the, the Bosch and Long workers believe that there's a recovery? You know, do, do, does anyone think uh, that there's been... Uh, uh, for the Aer Lingus workers a recovery. No. Of course there hasn't. All workers now realise that the so-called recovery is based on driving down pay, driving down conditions that people have won over decades, and that um, that's what the recovery is. I think the other thing that we identified was that the cost of living was the key issue, and we knew that before we went out. And it included the water charges, obviously, which is, I have to say, the biggest single issue affected every door. Um, in Dublin West, that was actually a little bit different because the meters are all installed, so there was a little bit of defeatism, you know, because oh, sure they, they the meter in, so meter in, charge in, kind of in people's minds. But that didn't mean it wasn't a major political issue. And um, the property tax, another big issue, doubling in, in charge, and actually in areas where the so called squeezed middle, which is really working class people, really, but the way that the, you know, the, the, they talk about it in, in terms here. They felt that property tax increase massively, and certainly in Castle Lock and in Dublin West, uh, those parts of the constituency, we gained, uh, we, we increased our vote and we were able to win the seat on that basis. 
I think the, the third key issue we identified is that public services have been absolutely savaged, particularly health, to pay for the bailout. And uh, the, the stories of the medical cards, I mean, did they not hear these stories three weeks ago? They didn't care. But now all of a sudden, there's been a concession given on that, which can only encourage people, you know, to fight further on water and on the other issues. Um, but the, the, the key word for all of it was austerity has taken a massive toll on people's lives and people are fed up and have had enough. Now obviously the key beneficiaries of that mood in the election era was Sinn Féin. Um, again, people can fill me in uh, on here, but in uh, the gain in the European seats, the gains on the council, I spoke to um, a leading Sinn Féin member on one of the panels that we were on um, for being interviewed. And I just said, listen, give us a, the shorter um, answer. Who didn't get elected for Sinn Féin? And uh, this is quite incredible. He told me only three candidates for the council elections did not get elected for Sinn Féin in the entire country. And that was in Rockar, if you know Rockar, it's a big posh part of the um, Black Rock and some other area that Sinn Féin wouldn't have a snowball's chance in the hell of getting a, a councillor in. Um, so they were the only people who didn't get elected. I mean, it, it just gives you an idea of the, the actual achievement of the Anti-Austerity Alliance, which is a very, very new banner that's only been established in the last six to nine months in reality. Um, to, to win what you've won in Limerick, to go from naught to three seats is very, very difficult. It really is. And uh, fair play to um, the Anti-Austerity Alliance in Limerick. You really are leading the way. Um, so but I, I think that uh, Sinn Féin will continue to make gains, there's no doubt about it, because there is a gap. <coughs> they are um, seen as being against austerity, um, which we, we should discuss. I, in, in some ways, uh, there's a lot of, uh, um, obviously, huge contradictions in that. But, um, you know, they will be seen as 14 TDs, a big machine in the doll, making an impact. People were giving them a chance, Labour voters in particular. And uh, I think we have to discuss how we take up uh, Sinn Féin, how we take up some of these other uh, forces. Um, in uh, one of the, the programmes that I was on, um, there was a Sinn Féin TD as well, and I, I don't think we should come and lambast Sinn Féin. I mean, there may be people from Sinn Féin here, we'll happily engage in a debate. But I do think we have to put demands on Sinn Féin now. Um, you got this massive vote, which was based on your opposition to austerity, opposition to the water charges, you know, to a lot of the same things that we're saying. But now, you can't support austerity budgets when it comes to voting for them on the council, usually it's in November. Uh, you can't make pacts with the parties that, you're met, that are in favour of austerity. And, um, you know, what are you going to do with <coughs> the water charges? Um, one of the questions that I put to Sinn Féin is why the day after you got the result you got, it was put to Piers Doherty, would you support a campaign of non-payment? And uh, it was teased out with him and he said no. And he didn't even give a commitment that Sinn Féin, if they go into a coalition, which inevitably they will, um, would abolish the water charges. You know, so we have to put specific demands like that on Sinn Féin. And I think it proves the need for our councillors to be thoroughly, and for our organisation, the Anti-Austerity Alliance, to be thoroughly anti-austerity, not just a little bit here, a little bit there, ease up on it here. Um, there is no necessity for austerity, there's no justification for austerity, and there's no economic basis to austerity, not for working class people. Yes, there is for the Bosch and Longs, there is for Aer Lingus and you know, these massive companies, it's in their interest to pursue austerity, but it's not in our interests. And we shouldn't be taken in by any argument. Um, so the idea of taking wealth from working class people, giving it to the rich, will not bring about economic recovery for, for us. Um, I think yeah, that given the role of the, the Labour Party in the last few years, it's clear that there's a need for a new party for working class people. And by working class I mean by hand and by brain. You know, people who work, get a salary, get a wage. Um, rely on work for, for their income, for their earnings. Um, and I think that uh, we need to build the Anti-Austerity Alliance now through the positions that we've won um, on Limerick Council and all, all the other councils through holding meetings, through running campaigns. I think obviously from what's been said, 
by the top table, the water charges is a key issue in Limerick. Um, and hopefully people might have gotten confidence from the election and the idea of challenging the meters might be more so than it was when it started out um, in our own area last year. Uh, I think another issue Kane mentioned, definitely in Dublin, this is becoming an absolutely epidemic, is the housing crisis. Um, in Dublin West, before the election, we had one meeting, uh, there was 50 people um, out of 50, generally 95% of them young women. Um, another meeting we had was 40 people. People are actually willing to get active now on the issue of housing, which is um, definitely different to before. They just see no option. And we're putting forward that the only way we change anything is by people who are affected by the issue coming out, putting on political pressure on the, the political parties to build social housing. <coughs> and obviously there's immediate steps that need to be taken, like rent controls and, and so on. But that's going to be definitely a major issue for us in, in Dublin. So I'm looking forward to seeing our councillors, yes, taking up people's cases individually for them. We have to do that. But also leading campaigns, you know, leading and explaining an alternative to people as well. We can't just be, you know, parish pump and, you know, doing the casework and doing nothing else. This is about building a movement and using the, the council positions that we have to inspire people, to lead people. For me, I, as being elected as a Socialist Party TD, I would argue we need socialist policies, that the wealth that's been, uh, that we create needs to be taken, used, controlled and owned. And uh, that that's the only way that we will actually bring about economic development. I mean, look, look at it this way. Um, Bosch and Lom, does anyone think that there's less of a need for contact lenses at the moment? Of course there isn't. Does anyone think they also produce Botox, I believe, as well? And I don't think there's any less of a demand for that. But, you know, the, the profits of these companies are absolutely massive. It's, you know, and, but because private control of wealth is the key, that's the key barrier to developing society. So workers are to have their jobs, their livelihoods decimated. Um, I think it's 1,100 jobs they're talking about overall. And um, can you imagine the effect of that in a small city like Waterford? Um, all because this company is privately controlled. It's not losing money. It's making money. Their share price went up last year. Um, but it's because it's privately owned for the enrichment of a few people that they dictate uh, what happens. Um, just think of all the useful, socially useful products that that company could be producing, you know, in, in the pharmaceutical sector. It just is beyond belief what could be done. Similarly with Aer Lingus, um, it isn't the case that Aer Lingus is some kind of an economic, um, uh, what's the basket case, in fact its profits have increased. Demand for air travel is obviously never going to go down very much um, and has gone up. But their profits are up, but they're insisting on driving the workers rotus, work conditions and making their lives absolutely miserable. The reason being they want them all to leave. They want to get rid of them and they want to bring in students on temporary contracts, burn them out for a couple of years. You wouldn't have a career in Aer Lingus any longer. You'd work there for a few years and then they'd get a new set of students. That's exactly what the agenda of that company is. You know, and so all of the women and men whose mortgages rely on keeping their jobs there, the, the company will keep at this until they force them out. But I have a funny feeling from seeing the mood on the picket line that that is not going to happen. I mean, the reception, I have to say, that myself and Joe Higgins got was amazing. Never, ever got that on any picket line before. And it's because they see us and, you know, people like us as uh, flying the flag for workers in the doll, as of course we will do. So just finally, um, in conclusion, I think this is a, there's definitely, so Limerick has something um, that other places don't have. It, there is a huge attendance here tonight. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's great to see it. We, you've won key positions, which I'm absolutely confident in the people who've won them, that they'll use them to the advantage of working, working people, unemployed people in Limerick. But also, I have to appeal to everybody here, if you haven't already, to join the Anti-Austerity Alliance and to get involved and to build it because this isn't a party that has, you know, elected reps who are VIPs 
and visit you every now and again and tell you what's going on on the council or hopefully what will be going on in the dog. This is an activist based group which, you know, as Cain said, we want to empower people to get involved, to get active. You know, that's how things change. Um, so take confidence from the election result, but please get involved with the anti-austerity lines in the Thanks a minute.